Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue to examine topic 7.3, the structure of matter. And in particular, we will uh, continue to examine the nature of hadrons and the strong interaction. All right, in the last video, uh, we introduced uh, the idea that quarks interact strongly. Uh, they interact according to the strong interaction and they have a particular color charge, red, green, or blue, or anti-red, anti-green, and anti-blue, uh, that uh, determine whether um, uh, the particle is sort of allowed if it occurs. That sort of allowingness uh, is related to something called quark or color confinement. Um, so uh, as I said, all hadrons are composite particles made of quarks, and they are all colorless. Uh, and that is due to quark or color confinement. This uh, quark or color confinement can be defined as or explained as the idea that there are no free quarks um, because the strong force is independent of distance. And when I say the strong force here, I mean the fundamental strong force, not the residual strong force, which is highly dependent on distance. But the strong force or the strong interaction that actually um, binds quarks together is independent of distance. So what happens is when you try to pull two quarks apart, or let's say you try to pull one of these quarks out of uh, the composite hadron that it's in, uh, then you have to expend energy to do so, and eventually you expend enough energy, if you pull it far enough or hard enough, which is not very far, that uh, that energy manifests as separate quarks. Um, and so new quarks pop into existence if you try to pull uh, these uh, composite particles apart. Um, if you put enough energy in to pull them apart, that energy uh, eventually allows for new particles to form, new quarks to form, uh, and so you're left with two composite but colorless particles. Um, these are uh, these colorless particles are known as hadrons. Uh, so when we say the Large Hadron Collider, uh, the LHC, what we mean is a uh, machine that is fundamentally designed to take a whole bunch of these guys and run them into each other. Um, uh, mostly protons and antiprotons, as it turns out. Um, all right, so a uh, new class of particles known as hadrons. Hadrons are made up of quarks, and all hadrons are colorless. Uh, now, hadrons come in two fundamental types, the type we've already seen, known as baryons. Baryons have either three quarks uh, or three antiquarks, if it is an antibaryon, um, and uh, they... Uh, are fermions, all of them. Um, and we've already seen one, which is a proton. Uh, as you might guess, the neutron is our other uh, familiar baryon. Okay, so hadrons uh, consist of baryons and what are known as mesons, which we'll get to in a second. An example baryon included that proton and also a neutron. And a neutron is composed of an up, down, down. Uh, and I will leave that as an exercise to the reader to confirm that if the neutron is up, down, down, then the charge on that neutron, or the electric charge on that neutron, will be zero. Um, this is plus two-thirds, minus one-third, minus one-third. Uh, now, there are a whole bunch of other uh, baryons, uh, like many, many, many. Um, composed of different combinations of those quarks. Uh, so for example, um, this lambda particle, particle here is an up-down strange, uh, also with charge zero. Um, this antiproton that we saw in the last slide uh, would be another example of a baryon or antibaryon. Um, and uh, there are many, 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 many baryons that exist, uh, although the two, by far, the two most common are the neutron and the proton. Now, the other way of getting a colorless uh, hadron, that is a colorless composite particle made of quarks, is instead of taking a quark, 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 or an antiquark, 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 uh, taking a quark and its own antiquark. Um, 
they will be, this quark will have a particular color, the anti-quark will have the anti of that color, uh, and so you can have what is known as a meson, uh, as long as the two uh, quarks have uh, opposite colors. So in this case, green and anti-green. Now, the particle I'm showing right now involves up and its anti-particle, uh, an anti-up, but you can also have a meson that is, for example, an up and an anti-down. Uh, the important ingredient is that the anti-particle has an anti-color of the particle itself. Um, so uh, these are made of two quarks. Uh, they are bosons. Um, they are, there are also recently discovered, uh, particles known as pentaquarks, but, uh, they are so recently discovered, uh, that they are not even in our, uh, syllabus, um, which I think is an interesting fact. Um, so there may be, as it turns out, more ways of, uh, acquiring hadrons or assembling hadrons, but by far the two most common are baryons and mesons. Uh, now... Uh, a meson, like this meson here, which is known as a neutral pion, uh, is composed of an up and an anti-up. Uh, it has zero charge, uh, but it is still colorless. Um, as it turns out, uh, these mesons are bosons, not fermions, and that has some consequences later. So these uh, mesons do not obey the Pauli exclusion principle. Um, and as it turns out, they can be used in some weird ways as sort of um, uh, force mediators or interaction mediators, the same way that, for example, a photon can be. So mesons here uh, are the other way of forming quarks into a colorless uh, package um, in addition to baryons.